All right, I went to the junk store and I found a bandpass filter. I hadn't seen these before. They were kind of hiding. Um, and it was $2.50, so if you're, okay. I like $2.50 because it's cheap and it's something, it's big, and it's old, and it's something we can open up and we can learn from. So a lot of the electronics these days is so darn small and all highly integrated and stuff, it's really hard to uh, see what's going on. But this one should be great. This one we should be able to go in and poke around in and stuff. So I think the first thing to do would be to go measure it. We'll go over to the uh, 8921 which is basically a, gener a tracking generator with a spectrum analyzer. So we'll, we'll sweep this out, see what kind of, uh, what kind of band pass it is. Uh, it should be centered around uh, 2.7 megahertz. And uh, yeah, it's made by TTE uh, right here in Los Angeles, California, here in California, uh, Berry Avenue. Very cool. And the input impedance, I guess, is 1K one, one ohm. Uh, so in order to make the... Uh, filters work right, you have to have them impedance match. A lot of times you have to have a, a matching transformer on the input and output. If you're going from a 50 ohm system into this, you need to like transform it up to 1K and then bring it back down to 50 ohms and stuff like that. But um, just to see the shape and stuff on the spectrum analyzer, um, we don't need to do that. We'll just, we'll just sweep it. Oh, there's something on the back here. Oh, just their logo again. Uh, in, out, and com and com, otherwise known as ground. All right, let me uh, figure out how, to, how I want to open this. I think it's pretty heavy duty. I think I'm going to put on the milling machine and see if I can't mill, can't mill away this uh, solder in here. All right, I think I cut away enough, enough of the metal that we can, we can kind of get in here now. You never want to cut in too deep, but then you don't want to cut in not enough. So. Ah. Ah, there's actually some fish paper in here. Nice. Oh, look at that. Very cool. Definitely looks like lots of poles and zeros. It's all old school, though. It's all just all hand wired up. So, yeah, this will be a good one. And then it's got this uh, fish paper on here, so it wasn't won't shirt out when you put the lid on. I like it. Uh, 33. Uh, looks like maybe 100. 15. 33. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to read some of these values. I don't know if we can read the uh, inductors or not. We'll have to measure those. But. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me see if I can't uh, draw a schematic for this thing. All right, there you go, schematic. Uh, looks like an interesting filter. Interesting, these two inductors back to back. Uh, usually there's capacitor to ground between these things, but these are just in series, whatever. Um, 300, 620, 300, these are picofarads. 220, 33, and 15, so this must be the high section, this must be the low section. To create the bandpass, you need a high filter and a low filter to overlap. And then this over here looks like a little fine tuning. There's a 47 and then a tacked on five to bring it into spec. So this, this little extra uh, capacitor was put on to, to move things around. But yeah, that's the topology. Let's, uh, let's go measure the thing and see what it does. Wow, isn't that a pretty filter? Uh, so I had the center at 2.618 megahertz. And let's uh, let's get a marker out here. So that little peak there is at 2.38, and this one's at 2.88. So if we span this out, let's see here. Let's check the span. There's two. This is two megahertz wide one megahertz wide. So that filter is, let's see, one megahertz. So these are 100 kilohertz each. So one, two, three, about 600 kilohertz wide. Wow, pretty narrow filter. I like it. It's kind of a strange center frequency, but um, I like the filter itself. Let's go back out to, yeah, it's nice. Uh, 
10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, yeah. It's good, uh, it's a good filter. Anyway, it used to be a good filter because we're going to open it up. All right, so here's the whole filter. Let's take the input and move it to the center. Should be right about there. Yeah, there we go. Well, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Hmm. And then what if we go to... What if we go the other way? What if, what if we put the center the other way? It's the other half of the filter. So there's the other half of the filter. So the other half of the filter is a little bit to the left, and one half of the filter is a little bit to the right. And I guess when they add up, add up, you get the whole filter. So I don't know. I'm not a filter guy. So it's fun though. All right, a couple other items from the junk store. EG and G. EG and G Reticon. I don't know if it was EG and G before this or I don't remember when the two merged. I think, I don't think, I think they were separate companies. Uh, they might be, a sep be separate divisions, but I think they were separate companies and then merged. Anyway, EG and G and then Reticon got together. Um, so these are 81.92 megahertz, which is interesting. Uh, pretty high frequency. And uh, they're nice and big and thick, so we should be able to take them apart, which is good. So I bought, I bought one to keep and one to tear apart. Um, and uh, Vuyo pointed out that um, uh, he's going to be sending me some some uh, crystal oscillators that are 8.192. These are 81.92, which is a uh, power of 2. It's 2 to the 13th. So there you go. Um, I've already taken this over to the milling machine and sort of cut away the perimeter here, so we should be able to should be kind of pry up on this. Oh, we didn't quite... That's okay, I can get through that one. Didn't quite cut the corners because there's these nuts in there. Let's maybe just use a Swiss Army knife uh, can opener, right? Or one of those GI can openers. Then it could be just like a, what, what's the guy's name? Steve, one, one, 1966 or whatever. The guy who does all the food stuff. <laughs> the reason I say get it onto a tray. <laughs> That guy. He's always using the P P whatever can opener thing. Oh man, this thing's kind of stuck in there. Oh, there we go. That guy's nuts. I don't know why he hasn't died of botulism yet. Ah, I see a crystal in there. I think. I think we're still okay here. I think we still can. Do some levering. Is it levering? Levering? Is it a lever? Is it a lever? Is it levering if it's a lever? Or is it levering if it's a lever? Or levering? Levering if it's a. I don't know. Oh. Goodness. All right. Get out my favorite tool. My official. I still can't pronounce it. Nips? I don't know. Whatever they are. They're nice pliers. That's all I know. They fit the hand well. There we go. Uh, ah, I can see inside. I can see forever now. Oh man, that sucker's stuck in there. I might have to go in and snip some, snip some things. I think we'll have to snip those and take a look at it. But little PC board. There's a crystal there. And the crystal is got handwriting on it. Yes. One of those vibratory pencils where you can... Yeah, it's X277792. Oh, yeah. That was a special crystal, I guess. Huh. Not much going on in there. So, yeah, let me... Uh, let me see if I can snip it a bit and get that PC board out of there so we can play with it. Okay, this thing is much more complicated than I imagined. <laughs> uh, so on this side there is a crystal. Because this is what I could see when I opened up the can. It was a crystal and a couple what I thought were transistors. One actually is a 5 volt regulator and one is an 8 volt regulator. So 5 volts and 8 volts. Uh, the 5 volts is to run this um, 7404 uh, inverter chip and then the 8 volts is to run the oscillator. Uh, which is which is interesting. Uh, there's a bunch of circuitry in here. 
Um, I believe it probably somehow is temperature stabilized. There's a uh, there's a thermistor right next to the uh, right next to the crystal, so it's detecting the temperature there. And I don't know if it's if it's actually heating things up. If one of these re resistors is a heating thing, this one seems like it's a little bit. Uh, maybe it could be a slight heater. I, I don't know for sure. Um, or it's just temperature compensation. It's just, uh, it's just in the, it's just in the loop to, to compensate for drift. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Um, there's definitely the output, which is, so the oscillator finally ends up, uh, first I thought the, uh, 7404 was, uh, it's, it's an AC part, 74AC04. First of all, I thought it was just an on off, like an enable, a DTL level input enable. This is the output pin. So the oscillator oscillates and then it goes into uh, one inverter and then a second inverter. So it goes through twice and it's a 74AC04, um, which is fast enough for the 81 megahertz. And it also is a 24, uh, 24 milliamp drive capability. So, you know, it's a reasonable out, output as well. So the output is definitely buffered um, from, from what's going on inside. Now it's not a Schmidt trigger, but it's, it's just a setting it to uh, TTL levels and, uh, squaring things up. So yeah, uh, there is a little inductor here. Let me see if I can point to that. There is a, a little inductor here. Uh, this is a uh, variable capacitor to adjust the frequency. Um, yeah, very interesting. Let's come down a little closer even. All right, like I said, this is the uh, this is the output stage. So the the input comes here, and then uh, the output of the first inverter goes into the input of the second inverter, and the second inverter then comes to the output. None of the other inverters seem to be used. Um, these three pins here are the five volt regulator, and these three pins here are the eight volt regulator. So this is five volts here. This is eight volts here. This is raw VCC here. Um, this looks like there's a little uh, input capacitor. Um, this particular pad, I have to only guess, it's probably a frequency adjust, probably a voltage input to frequency adjust uh, the oscillator. So I need to investigate that a little more. Um, so let's see here. This is the, uh, crystal is right below this little opening. So they have, a, have an opening, which is kind of interesting to the crystal. And then uh, these, this is the, uh, yeah, these, these two pins right here are the crystal, okay? So this is definitely part of the crystal. This is definitely on the crystal and that comes out here to this pin here. So it's definitely, it's definitely pulling the crystal, right? So this is, this is definitely a frequency adjust for the, uh, for the oscillator. And then the main, Let's see, the main oscillating transistor, it has to be this one. So this is the, this is the oscillator. So there's an inductor here. This is the oscillator. And it comes over into here, which maybe is just a filter. I'm not quite sure. There's a little LC, LC thing here. Uh, I don't know exactly the topology of, of this particular oscillator. Um, again, it's probably the third harmonic. The crystal is marked very funny. The crystal is marked uh, it's marked like that. So there's no really, there's no really good information on the, uh, on the crystal. So yeah, if you can decipher that, let me know. But, uh, anyway, um, let's turn it the right way again. Yeah. Like I said, this little, uh, little inductor here, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on over here, so I don't, I don't quite know all what's going on. There's another, there's another, another uh, transistor here, so I imagine this is probably the oscillator, and this is probably an amplifier uh, to boost up the signal, because the oscillator is usually put out a quite small signal. This boosts it big enough to to trigger a uh, the a TTL input, and then the TTL input is uh, you know massaged through the through the inverters. So yeah, this is probably just a little amplifier. And yeah, there you go. I don't know. Uh, like I said, a lot more complicated than I thought. 
Uh, definitely looks like an expensive unit in its day. Oh, there's another transistor over here. Mm, that's interesting. It doesn't look like a transistor. It looks like a diode. It looks like a diode because of the uh, the way that it's wired. So, don't know about that one. Uh, I don't think it's a reactor. Anyway, this funny little diode over there, and then a place for an extra capacitor here. Let me see if I can read a part number on that uh, part number on that little transistor there, if that is a transistor. All right, I take back what I said. Uh, this looks like a diode, and this one looks like a diode also, the way that it's wired up. And I kind of missed it the first time, but this is the oscillator right here. This uh, this little transistor here is the oscillator. It has this inductor associated with it. So yeah, this is probably an architecture very, very similar to the last one I showed, where this thing oscillates all by itself at 81 megahertz, and then the feedback uh, you know, has to go through this crystal, and it selects that particular frequency to, uh, to lock in on. And then there's a little uh, uh, amplifier here to make it big enough to fire the TTL. So yeah, uh, that, is the, uh, that is the oscillator right there. And there was another, another diode also somewhere. Anyway, yeah, it was interesting. All right, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the teardown. Uh, I'm not going to trace the circuit out. It's too complicated. I don't have that much interest in it. Um, but uh, yeah, it does look interesting.